Hello everybody, welcome to Create with Chris. Today we will be creating a fun and quick project using color scraping plus a few other goodies. So, everybody's telling me I need to show my face. So here I am. Let me introduce myself. I am Chris Hoy. I am a decorative painter, designer, owner, and founder of Cupboard Distributing, Pixelated Palette, Scrapbook Outlet, uh, Chris Hoy Design, CD Stencils, and I think maybe that's the end of it. Um, today we are going to be doing some fun things. It's been kind of a long time for those of you that are sitting at home with a stay and shelter and everybody's hair is a little bit longer and their nails are a little bit shorter. So uh, we have survived. Thank goodness we have our wonderful hobby of creating because that gives us so much pleasure and fun. And it, it's so very comforting to have that little retreat. We don't have to go anywhere and still be able to enjoy life. So I encourage you to take time, smell the roses and be creative. So let's get started today. I will show you. Um, I did this little plaque and it's kind of hard to see here. Um, I've had a lot of questions about color scraping and what it's all about. Can you show me how it works? What do you use it for? So I wanted to talk about that today. And uh, the girls were talking in the office and they said, oh, it would be so much fun if you created an entire project. So. I didn't want to have um, a lot of time spent on this. I wanted to do something kind of quick and easy. So I picked this little stencil, Scrub-a-Dub-Dub. -dub. I thought it was adorable. And it's one of our brand new stencils from the CD Stencil line. And I added the, this one's called Fizz. Isn't that cute? A Fizz stencil. And uh, thought we could put them all together and make a cute little bathroom sign. So let's get started here. push my buttons. Alrighty, so this is the board I'm working on and it is a 4 inch by 12 inch uh, rectangle uh, plaque and I'm using, this is called a stencil pal. Very flexible. Somebody said it reminded them of a tool that you can get through Pampered Palette uh, to scrape the bolts. I'm not sure about that. But this is so nice because no matter how much you use it, uh, paint will never stick permanently. So this is a great tool if you want to use it as a stencil um, helper to kind of mask off areas. It's just super handy, super durable, and nothing sticks to it. So those are all plus, plus, pluses. Alrighty, so we're going to be using this tool. My board I have uh, primered with Chalky Gesso. Kind of a big fan of Chalky Gesso. Uh, if you're using a white base coat this is just so perfect because it's a little more opaque it's a little bit thicker a little bit heavier covers quickly and I do use my famous uh, specialty sponges all I do is get a little bit of the chalky gesso smooth it on and I think this probably took three coats now if I were using uh, snow white paint probably I would put down a sealer coat first and then probably use three, four coats of the Snow White paint. So, um, not that I'm lazy, but this is just quicker. And after it's on, you can sand it. It is just silky smooth. This is really, really a nice product. And DecoArt's always on the cutting edge with new awesome product. This one comes in several different colors. So if you want other base coats besides white, just perfect. So we've got this base coated with the Chalky Gesso. We're going to start using the color scraping. I've decided to go with, um, I like to get colors that kind of are graduated in shade. And this is Whispering Turquoise, oh no, Shoreline, Laguna, and Mermaid Tail. And I'll tell you why I picked these colors, because they just, they say water. Shoreline, Laguna, Mermaid Tail. You know, they just get you in the mood of water. And I thought that with the bubbles, this would be so perfect. Now, to do the color scraping, you just got to let your hair down. Since we all have long hair now. Hey, I am on the radar for a haircut, but it's not until next month. So, ponytails it is. Alrighty. 
um, you just got to let yourself just relax and have fun. If you're a very structured person, just got to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and, and just enjoy it. Now, you all have watched Bob Ross. We're going to kind of take a tip from Bob Ross. We're just going to glide, and I've got the edge of my um, stencil pal. I'm just going to glide it through the paint, just like that. So I've got like a little roll of paint. Actually, it's on both sides. All right. Now this is just kind of scraping it across. I'm not a real big fan of starting with a straight line, so I like to go both ways to kind of diffuse that. And again, I'm going to scrape through the paint, get a little on there. If I get a straight line, see how you can go over that and kind of smoosh it both ways? That way you're not having a solid line. And let's add some more in here. So I'm not afraid of the straight lines. I just prefer them not to be straight. And we'll just get some color on there. Don't worry about it. You, you'll get a different look every single time. That's what's so much fun about this. And believe me, sometimes the unexpected turns out to be the best. I'm going to go to Laguna. Squirt a little bit of that out. And I, I squirted way too much of the shoreline. So I'm getting just a little bit of Laguna. I'm going to go in there. You can wait until it dries or not. We're on a time schedule, so we're, or not it is today. And we're just going to add some on top of that. Now, because I am scraping it so thin, you can hear how thin that scrape is. I don't have heavy paint. I'm going to be able to see the layers of color kind of show through. Get a little more on there. Now, if I think I need more of the shoreline, I can go back and pick some up. See how it just kind of accents each other? And, of course, I'm running out of paint and need a little more. You either get too much or not enough. Is that not the rule of thumb? Uh, I'm going to add just a little more down here. Now, I decided when I was doing this project that I was going to be using bubbles, white bubbles. So I need to get the tone of my plaque just a little bit darker. So I have that contrast between the bubbles. Now, it's easy to go off the side here. So I'm going to flip it around so I can run it smoothly off this side as well. See all these empty spots here? That's because it's easier to go this way up a little more of that Laguna. This is so thin that probably if I put my fingers on it, I'm not going to get any paint on them. That was there before. Okay. Now I am going to cover the whole thing, but I wanted to uh, get a fair amount of it covered before, before I put on the mermaid tail, which is the darkest color. And you'll see why in a minute here. It is really a strong color and I didn't want it to overpower. I just want it to accent. Again, if you scrape over it, you're going to really thin that down. I'm trying to hone in on those areas that are empty. Go a little bit up here. See how you can build those colors up? Ooh. Just really beautiful. Too dark, pick up some shoreline and just go over it. Can you see how washy and watery that looks? I just uh, really a fun technique. And I'll show you some different examples that I did using different color combinations. Now I'm trying not to do this. You can see where these stop and start. If you go straight down and start, you're going to get that vertical line. So kind of keep that in mind. When I start, I'm going to lay it more on the side so I don't get that sharpness. And I'll just go over that until they're gone, or until I'm happy with it. A little more up in here. Don't get rid of uh, all the layers of color. That's what really makes this beautiful. I'm going to lose some of that 
lightness. I want to pull just a little more of that turquoise in there. Again, keeping in mind I'm going to be using white bubbles, so I want to definitely have enough color in there that it's going to contrast for those bubbles. And let's get a little right in there. And I can hook, I can, you know, go in those little areas and just pull some in there, go over it. Now this is pretty dry, but look at all those colors. Can you see how really cool that is? Let me zoom in this way. You won't see the shakiness so much. So other than where I did the stop and start, and I can go over those and kind of tone those down a, wet, a little bit also. And I just added some more, did my. Okay, there we go. Just keep working it. There's no time when it's too late that you can't fix it. So just a little bit down here in the corner. And I think I'll go with that medium color, which is the Laguna, just to kind of blend those two together. All these colors work so well together that it's super easy to get a nice watery look on it. And because the layers are so thin, um, once you start building them up, they sort of all glow through. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. I'm going to add just a little bit of softening in there. Maybe down here it's a little bit darker than I want, so I'm going to put that medium color on there and just pull it across. And see how that tones it down. Is it too light up here? Think about how those white bubbles are going to look. Scrape over that. And I'm really scraping. You can hear how well, how tightly I'm scraping. I want to really get that on there thin and even. I love a smooth surface. Now, if I had a little more time, I probably would let this dry and then go back and lightly sand it. But we're on kind of a little tight time schedule here. And so I'm going to just quickly dry it. Now I am using, this is a... Okay, I can't see everything. All right, I am using the Heat It tool, which is um, a little tool from Ranger, a little uh, heat gun. I love this because it is so incredibly quiet. It's small, very lightweight, and it dries it very quickly. Now, I always keep my hand down here when I'm drying because if it's too hot for your hand, it's going to be too hot for the paint. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. I would give this a little sand with sandpaper. It's really very, very smooth, so I don't need to worry about that today. Alrighty, let's go ahead and put the words on. Okay, remember, the holes are at the top. Make sure your plaque is the right way, right side up and grab a piece of painter's tape unless you're really steady have a really steady hand you know what we're going to do bubbles first aren't we okay back up chris I'm getting ahead of myself here okay this is the fizz stencil isn't that the neatest stencil and i'm going to move it up because i like the bubbles to kind of hang over the edge. I don't want them to look like everything's inside a border. I want it to look like it's flowing. So I'll kind of bump it so they're a little off on both sides. And I'm going to anchor this down. Alrighty. And I am using my spectacular stencil brush. And this is a really, really, really soft bristle brush perfect for this. And let's go in just a tad for this. Okay. And I'm going to use white paint. And I usually get kind of paint all over me. So give me a second here to clean up my hands so I don't make a bigger mess. I know everybody else out there is really tidy painters, right? 
Okay, so let's get some Snow White paint. And I'll just put a little bit on the palette here. And load my brush. Now, if you're not a stenciler and you always have trouble stenciling, one of, the, one of the keys is loading your brush correctly. So you're not just going to dab it into paint and have a glob on the end. You want to work it into the bristles. And this stencil brush has, I don't know, I've never counted, but I'm sure there's thousands of bristles in there. So it is made to hold a lot of paint. Really going to work it in there because I want to make sure that I don't have to stop every two seconds and reload my brush. I want these bubbles to be very soft and very kind of fluffy. That's not a word for a bubble, but you know what I mean. Wiping the excess off on the paper towel so that when I start out, I'm not going to get any harsh bubble lines. And we'll go in just a little bit here. And I'll start over here. Now I've got, only got tape on one side, so I'm going to anchor it down with my hand, my left hand here. And I'm just going to start with a soft swirl. And it's just a very light. You know how you dry brush, you start out very, very softly until you get a feel for the, how much paint's coming off on the brush? Still a little heavy, so I'm going to wipe some of that off. There we go. It doesn't take much, and it doesn't look like I have much there, but if I lift it up, see, they're really starting to evolve. So you wipe off until you think you have it just right, and then wipe off a little bit more, and it probably will be just about right. Okay. Now work this area a little bit more. Now, Every bubble doesn't have to have the same intensity. Some bubbles can be stronger, so if I want to work this bubble a little bit more over here, when you look, it's going to be a little bit brighter. I don't want them all equal. That just adds a little more interest. And you can see now that I'm comfortable with my brush, I can go in and really put some pressure down because I know how much paint is on it. And because it has all those bristles, I can do a lot before I need to reload, which is ideal because it's sometimes hard to match everything up. And you can keep peeking to see what it's going to look like. It's always fun to kind of take a sneak peek. You don't have to wait until the show's over to look underneath that stencil. Okay. And we'll just keep going with this thing. Now, as I was doing these bubbles, I thought, oh, this looks really cool. But if you know me, I always have to do that one more thing. So as I was sitting here working on what I was, yesterday, what I was going to do today, I was thinking how I could jazz those bubbles up just a little bit. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to add some iridescent shimmer on those bubbles. And this week at Cupboard Distributing, we happen to have these um, iridescent varnishes on sale. So I took some of that turquoise, and we'll do that in a minute. And I'll tell you what, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but they are so cool. All righty. Let's see what this looks like. Kind of looks like bubbles. And I'm going to put a little more right here. Can you see how light this area is? So I want to make sure that bubble, um, because it's on a light background, is going to show up just a little more. So I'm just going to go in there and work on that bubble. See what a difference that makes. You want to push the background back. All right, so we've got our bubbles here looking pretty good. And just take a peek where they're going to blend together because you want to make sure you don't have like a line where one, one starts and one stops when you move the stencil over. And because I don't want them to be samey samey, you know, if you just slide it over, I'm going to bump the stencil up 
and I'm going to lay it down here. Now I'm going to tape it down. I just painted those, but if I don't press it down real hard, I'll be okay. So I'm going to start again. I just reloaded. Check your brush to see where your paint status is. Very, very light touch. And we'll just start working those bubbles in. It's fun to watch on Facebook to see what all everybody's doing during this time of staying home and staying safe. So I hope everybody's keeping busy and active and having lots of fun times with your paintbrushes. Okay, now to make this easy, um, if you want to get the surface and all the stencils I'm using today, uh, Jen has created a bundle, and that's kind of been a favorite thing that's going on right now at Cupboard Distributing. Uh, the bundles make it easy because you go in and you click and you get everything you need. So the bundle will include the surface and the two stencils. Is that right, Jen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, surface and two stencils. And then you can create one, two, three, four, or a hundred of these, whatever you want to do. I thought this would be fun to do in soft greens. You know, you could mat match your bathroom decor. Originally, I thought about doing grays and um, more subtle colors. I kind of like that. Now, I looked over here, and I thought this one bubble needed to be a little brighter right here. I don't know why, but it caught my eye, so I'm going to go back and just brighten that up. Yeah, it needed it. I don't know why that one just looked kind of alone there. And it doesn't have to be the whole bubble. You can make part of the bubble a little bit stronger or just um, the edge of it. Okay. So if you want to get the bundle, you just go to Cupboard Distributing and in the on the left hand side there's a little bar you just go to that and click on bundles and that should come up because she just got that in there oh that's kind of cool it and that neat all right but we can do better so i am going to use some of this iridescent turquoise i sure hope you can see this you know what i wonder if you can see it on the can you see the shimmer I don't know if you can or not. Oh, there it goes. Right here on this one. Can you see that shimmer, that turquoise? Isn't that the coolest thing ever? Oh my gosh. And because it's a varnish, it's going to kind of seal it. So I'm going to, I'm just cleaning my brush out by wiping it on a paper towel. Actually, I'm going to get a little water because I want to get that white out of there. And that's one thing super nice about these stencil brushes. If you want to change color, you can just wash them out, towel dry it, and you're good to go. You don't have to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to get a little bit of this varnish. Now, just because this is like super clear, um, can you see the shimmer on that palette? So pretty. That's why I use a great palette when I do um, online teaching because you can see some of the color a little bit better than you can on a white palette. But just because this is clear doesn't mean you don't need to pay attention to how you load your brush. Load it well and get that excess off of there because if you do not, you are going to have to deal with it having those um, uneven edges. Now when I started out, and I'll have to remind you to kind of pay attention when you put your stencil down. If you're going to go back and have to match it up, especially something like this that's so busy busy, you have to remember you've got four sides so you, it can go any way. I always keep an eye out or keep my tape on the side, the horizontal side. Does that make sense? 
That way I know I can place it back on. And I made a metal note, it was about a half inch from the top. So that way I can line it back up because honestly it'll drive you crazy trying to figure out placement if you don't make a mental note. Alrighty, these big bubbles need some shimmer. And I'm just doing a few of them. I don't want to do every one. Sometimes if you do every one, you lose that impact. I don't want it to be spotty either. There's just like a happy balance. Do a few of them, do it well, and then move on. I do want this big one down here to really shimmer. Mostly I'm focusing on the big ones, but you might want to do a couple of the little ones just to kind of keep it balanced out. Okay, remember over here we moved it up, so I'm looking for that little bubble right there, and this one right here, I can line it up. And get that back in place, and put a little piece of tape on it. Don't press it down real hard. And we'll put this bundle up here, a little shimmer down there. Now remember my words are going to go over here in the middle, so I don't want to detract from them too much. Okay. Just that much, but you know what? It's these little touches that really make a huge difference. So, keep that in mind. When you're adding accent, pay attention to where you're putting it. You want to put it in places it's going to get the most impact, and then you don't want to overdo it so that I'm hoping you can see that shimmer. Come on, shimmer show. Well, maybe not, but it is so cool. Take my word for it. This is like the coolest thing ever. And doesn't that look like water? Look how it flows. That is so much fun. And how long did that take? Um, not too terribly long. We've done quite a bit. Alrighty, now we'll go back on for the lettering. And stencils are pretty much positioned so that they're smack dab in the middle of the uh, plastic film, the mylar. So if you line it up and get, um, get it even around the edges, you should be in good shape. If you're particularly... Um, fussy about lining it up. I have kind of a good eye. I can usually be pretty spot on. But if you're really uh, worried about getting it exactly where it needs to go, just get a ruler out. No shame in that game. Okay. Alrighty, let's get some black. And I wanted black because I really wanted this to show up strong. And I took that right And I made a mess again. Okay, Chris. We'll clean up well later. Alrighty, we're going to stencil these letters in. Please, you're using um, the lamp black. Very, very strong color. Again, I'm going to work it well into my brush. Please be careful because if you get it in there too heavy, you're going to have raggedy edges. This is where you want it to be nice and clean and crisp. So I'm going to take that, clean that excess off of there, and I can go in. Now with the bubbles, we kind of swirled it because we want that soft kind of ethereal look. With the lettering, I'm just going to pounce it. I'm not pouncing hard. I'm just letting the paint come off of the brush to get a really soft. If you pounce it hard and get thick paint on there, it, it's going to look kind of blobby unless you want that texture on there. Just keep a light touch. Two coats better than one because you'll get a nice even coverage. Crisp edges. And that's exactly what you want. This is a brand new stencil we did last week, I think it was. We did a series of kind of bathroom, <laughs> cute little bathroom stencils. 
So get a chance, go to Cupboard Distributing and take a peek at the what's new or go to CD stencils and, and look at the um, new stencils. We have fun coming up with new designs all the time. And it's fun to take these and create something, um, you know, in, in just a, a short afternoon. And these are great right now if you've got the, the kids, the grandkids, nieces, nephews, whatever. I'm telling you, they love doing this because it, it turns out well. And they like to do things that look really super nice. Okay, I'm just going to give this a quick hit with the hair dryer or the heat tool. And one of the reasons that I lifted it up, I, I don't want to set, heat set that paint on my stencil. It makes it harder to clean. And you can line it back up very easily. There we go. And I think I got into some paint there. We can fix that too. There's nothing we can't fix, is there? Okay. I have black paint all over my paint bottle and it's now all over me. Okay, of course black paint just absolutely grows when you go to clean it off your fingers. Alrighty. Let's get a little more paint on the brush. Again, just because I put the first coat on, it looks awesome. Don't get impatient. Take your time. Make sure your second coat is going to be just as perfect. So clean that off. Get that excess. And then just one more time, go right over that. What it does, when the paint dries, a lot of times you ever notice... Um, you think you covered it well and you go back and there's like little places you missed. Well, what happens when the paint dries, it kind of shrinks a little bit. So those areas that might be a little bit thinner are going to open up. And you're going to see some areas you th I know I painted that. Well, you did, but as it dries, it opens up. So you just need that second coat to make it look perfect. Alrighty, so we've got that on there, looking good. Now most of the time, I'm okay with having these little splits in the stencil. These little areas where the letters are connected. But I think on this, I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. Gives it a more hand-painted look as opposed to a stencil look. And I'm using my Epic Script Liner. It's my favorite little liner brush. And I'm just going to connect a few of these letters. Not, I just think it's going to be a little bit more fun if we do that. This is a choice you can do or not do. It's just going to make it look a little more hand painted as opposed to stenciling. going to do the B and the D because there's a lot of B's and D's here. Okay. Again, this bundle is available at Cover Distributing, www.cdwood.com. Just go to the left-hand side. There's a drop-down. Everything I'm using today, of course, is from Cover Distributing. The heat tool, the brushes, the paints, we, we have it all. If you've not shopped here, you're missing out. And if you want to stay connected, go to our website and sign up for our uh, newsletters, and you'll get a newsletter every week. Let you know our new product. We have some pretty amazing sales. And if you want to be entertained, go to Facebook and sign up or check keep an eye out for our videos because we have fun with those. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I did get kind of messy up here with some excess paint. I can go back and touch it up or I can just go back with my little wet wipe and kind of tone that back down. I think I'll just go back and add a little bit of Laguna over that. All gone. 
just like that. Alrighty, so we need to brighten these letters up. One of my favorite things to do is just to take my stylus just for fun. Just add some. It it just kind of opens their eyes a little bit. You know, it just brings more attention, breaks those dark letters up. Super easy to do this. And I'm just going to do the first and the last because that kind of puts those words together. And just go right down those. I can do five dots pretty easy. So that's usually what I normally do is just the five dots. Now, dub dub is a word, so dub dub was the beginning D and the end D, so scrub a uh, dub dub. Okay, now I think we need to go back and kind of um, highlight some of these bubbles a little bit. You can do that a couple ways. I can go in with my stylus, and I've got it loaded with white, and I can dot and then drag it around. You get that perfect little comma stroke. That's kind of my favorite thing to do when I'm doing quick comma strokes because they always turn out so perfect. I'm not gonna do every one, but look how that brightens it up. Maybe that was a little bit too much. There we go. And just bring in you want these bubbles to kind of dance a little bit. This brings a lot of movement there. Because they're shimmering in the light. It's a bad thing when you do the bottom ones before the top and then you have to drag your hand through them. And I think we need one right here. And take a look at it. And you want to see if it's balanced. That looks pretty good. We don't need every one. We just want to brighten up so that they're kind of all bright around there. Now that looks pretty good, but I thought it would be fun. I hope it's dry enough um, to go around the edge. And this is a pit pen, and it is India ink. And it is super, has this nice little chisel edge on it. It's super black, and we can just go around the edge. And I'm, I'm taking my little pinky finger, and you know how you have a compass that has a point in the center and you twist around? Well, this is my point in the center. I use my pinky to kind of keep my edges going around there. Let's see. And we'll add a couple lines. Now my pen is just about dry here. This is going to add a little bit of whimsy, and I'm going to have to be careful because I don't want to get into any of that wet paint. So let me just go this way. And it probably would be a little bit darker, but the problem is that my paint's probably not dry enough. Now, the thicker it is, or the harder you press, the thicker the line's going to be. It's almost like a brush tip. Another reason you want to kind of stay out of wet paint with these is because it will ruin the tip if it has dry paint on it. And just... Okay. Is that not cute or what? And I had another idea. Alrighty. So, on the one I did, and I'm not going to do it here because I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but I added liquid glass. Can you see the dimension on these bubbles? There we go. All right in here, I added 
on some of the smaller bubbles, liquid glass. And what this is, it's just a thicker medium. Zoom in, I'll do a few of them here. Alrighty. So I'm just going to press it down. Kind of like, I don't know if years ago if you did the liquid embroidery, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. And it's thick. It will peak up, but it will not puddle out. So I can add a few of these. It's going to add dimension. It's going to dry crystal clear. Again, this is liquid glass. It's just that one other thing that makes everybody go, wow, how'd you do that? We like that, don't we? Okay, so that's enough to give you a good idea how that's going to look. Is that not cool? Okay, so here's another thought I had. I was looking on Pinterest. You know how you get bored and you go to Pinterest. And I didn't get a chance to get them painted up. But I've seen a lot of these signs have the wooden beads. And they string them on the wire. Wouldn't this be fun to take this wire and then have these little beads in all the different colors of blue and it would look like the bubbles. I just think that would be so cute. And you can have a whole string of those across and the bubbles down here, super, super cool. So hopefully today I've given you some ideas. Let me go back to me again. I've given you some ideas on what you can do um, to create this fun little project, not only just this fun project, but to use these tools to do some more creative playing time. So you don't have to have a pattern for everything. Um, it's just fun to play around with design, also with um, color. Oh, I was going to show you some of the, the pieces that I did. Okay, let me find them here. These are totally different. Maybe I can just hold these up. Okay, maybe not. Okay, we'll go here. Alrighty, we'll go back to this. Okay, this was one that was kind of, um, I wanted it to look like old barn wood. And does it ever. This is the coolest effect. Super, super easy. Just scraped it a few times and you get that look. And I think I used driftwood and snow white to get this look. Um, this is another one. This is a little bit darker. This one is uh, maroon, and I think I used a little bit of green in there just for fun. This one you can probably see a little bit better. Here we'll go. Look how pretty that, I mean, that is so pretty. All those colors in there. I'm kind of a fall palette, so I really love the look and I use different shades of brown a little bit of a probably um, red iron oxide trying, or, or rust some color and then the, the oranges this one is almost um, reminiscent of wood grain look at all this design in here and these are just shades of golds and browns so there you can get an, an idea I had done some that were um, very beachy and I used like um, a really soft blue, a really kind of a coral shell and um, off-white. Beautiful. I painted uh, shells on them. They were really pretty. I just lost my face. Okay, I'm not sure what the deal is. There we go. So Take these ideas, play around with them. It's so much fun. Just get a piece of scrap paper and start spreading colors on. You'd be surprised what you can come up, up with and how uh, cool it is. So if you have any questions, Lindsay is over there asking, um, trying to answer them all. I'll check them out after I get off here and um, answer them if I can as well. So thank you for joining me today on create with Chris and I look forward to our next time together. Again, if you need anything, Cupboard Distributing has it all, www.cdwood.com. Bye-bye.